Why should you never wave people across at pedestrian crossings? It's safer for you to carry on. They may not be looking. Another vehicle may be coming. They may not be ready to cross. If people are waiting to use a pedestrian crossing, slow down and be prepared to stop. Don't wave them across the road, because another driver may not have seen them, may not have seen your signal, and may not be able to stop safely. What's the purpose of road humps, chicanes and narrowings? To separate lanes of traffic. To increase traffic speed. To allow pedestrians to cross. To reduce traffic speed. Traffic calming measures help to keep vehicle speeds low in congested areas where there are pedestrians and children. A pedestrian is much more likely to survive a collision with a vehicle traveling at 20 miles per hour than they are with a vehicle traveling at 40 miles per hour. What requires extra care when you're driving or riding in windy conditions? Passing pedal cyclists. Moving off on a hill. Using the brakes. Turning into a narrow road. Always give cyclists plenty of room when overtaking them. You need to give them even more room when it's windy. A sudden gust could easily blow them off course and into your path. How would age affect an older person's driving ability? They'll take longer to react to hazards. They won't signal at junctions. They'll need glasses to read road signs. They won't be able to obtain car insurance. As people age, their reaction time gets slower. The rate of decline varies from person to person but you can expect them to take longer to react to a hazard and they may be hesitant in some situations, for example, at a junction. Which sign means that there may be people walking along the road? Always check the road signs. Triangular signs are warning signs, they inform you about hazards ahead and help you to anticipate any problems. There are a number of different signs showing pedestrians. Learn the meaning of each one. You're waiting to come out of a side road. Why should you look carefully for motorcycles? Motorcycles are usually faster than cars. Police patrols often use motorcycles. Motorcycles have right-of-way. Motorcycles can easily be hidden behind obstructions. If you're waiting to emerge from a side road, look carefully for motorcycles, they can be difficult to see. Be especially careful if there are parked vehicles or other obstructions restricting your view. What does this sign mean? Give way to trams. Route for trams. Give way to buses. Route for buses. Take extra care when you encounter trams. Look out for road markings and signs that alert you to them. Modern trams are very quiet and you may not hear them approaching. What does this sign mean? Risk of ice. Six roads converge. Multi-exit roundabout. Place of historical interest.
It will take up to 10 times longer to stop when it's icy. Where there's a risk of icy conditions, you need to be aware of this and take extra care. If you think the road may be icy, don't brake or steer harshly, as your tires could lose their grip on the road. What does this sign mean? Wait at the crossroads. Give way to farm vehicles. Give way to trams. Wait at the barriers. Obey the give way signs. Trams are unable to steer around you if you misjudge when it's safe to enter the junction. What does a red traffic light mean? Stop if you're able to brake safely. You should stop unless turning left. Proceed with care. You must stop and wait behind the stop line. Whatever light is showing, you should know which light is going to appear next and be able to take appropriate action. For example, when amber is showing on its own, you'll know that red will appear next. This should give you ample time to anticipate and respond safely. What's the purpose of a catalytic converter? To reduce harmful exhaust gases. To reduce the risk of fire. To reduce engine wear. To reduce fuel consumption. Catalytic converters reduce a large percentage of harmful exhaust emissions. They work more efficiently when the engine has reached its normal working temperature. What color are the reflective studs along the left-hand edge of the motorway? Green. Red. White. Amber. Reflective studs are used to help you in poor visibility. Different colors are used so that you'll know which lane you're in. These are Red on the left-hand edge of the carriageway White between lanes Amber on the right-hand edge of the carriageway Green between the carriageway and slip roads What must you do when you're overtaking a car at night? Flash your headlights before overtaking Switch your headlights to main beam before overtaking. Make sure you don't dazzle other road users. Select a higher gear. To prevent your headlights from dazzling the driver of the car in front, Wait until you've passed them before switching to main beam. You've just gone through flood water. What should you do to make sure your brakes are working properly? Accelerate and keep to a high speed for a short time. Stop for at least an hour to allow them time to dry. Avoid using the brakes at all for a few miles. Go slowly while gently applying the brakes. Water on the brakes will act as a lubricant, causing them to work less efficiently. Using the brakes lightly as you go along will quickly dry them out. When should you flash your headlights at other road users? When showing that you're about to turn. When letting them know that you're there. When telling them that you have right of way. When showing that you're giving way.
You should only flash your headlights to warn others of your presence. Don't use them to greet others, show impatience or give priority to other road users, because they could misunderstand your signal. You're following a slower moving vehicle. What should you do if there's a junction just ahead on the right? Only consider overtaking when you're past the junction. Overtake after checking your mirrors and signaling. Slow down and prepare to overtake on the left. Accelerate quickly to overtake before reaching the junction. You should never overtake as you approach a junction. If a vehicle emerged from the junction while you were overtaking, a dangerous situation could develop very quickly. What does this sign mean? Road liable to flooding. Uneven road surface. Quayside or river bank. Steep hill downwards. You should be careful in these locations, as the road surface is likely to be wet and slippery. There may be a steep drop to the water, and there may not be a barrier along the edge of the road. You're parked on the road at night. When must you use parking lights? When you're facing oncoming traffic. When the speed limit exceeds 30 miles per hour. When there are continuous white lines in the middle of the road. When you're near a bus stop. When parking at night, park in the direction of the traffic. This will enable other road users to see the reflectors on the rear of your vehicle. Use your parking lights if the speed limit is over 30 miles per hour. What should you do when you're approaching roadworks on a motorway? Speed up to clear the area quickly. Always use the hard shoulder. Obey the speed limit. Stay very close to the vehicle in front. Be aware of reduced speed limits at roadworks. Speed limits shown inside a red circle are mandatory and cameras are often used to enforce the reduced limit. Slow down in good time and keep your distance from the vehicle in front. What should you do if the left-hand pavement is closed due to street repairs? Speed up to get past the roadworks more quickly. Watch out for pedestrians walking in the road. Position close to the left-hand curb. Use your right-hand mirror more often. Where street repairs have closed off pavements, proceed carefully and slowly, as pedestrians might have to walk in the road. What should you do immediately after joining a motorway? Position your vehicle in the center lane. Readjust your mirrors. Try to overtake. Stay in the left-hand lane. When you've just joined a motorway, Stay in the left-hand lane long enough to get used to the higher speeds of motorway traffic before considering overtaking. Which sign shows that you're entering a one-way system? If the road has two lanes, you can use either lane and overtake on either side. 
Use the lane that's more convenient for your destination unless signs or road markings indicate otherwise. What does this sign mean? Contraflow bus and cycle lane. No waiting for buses and cycles. With flow bus and cycle lane. No buses and cycles allowed. Buses and cycles can travel in this lane. In this example, they'll flow in the same direction as other traffic. If it's busy, they may be passing you on the left, so watch out for them. Times on the sign will show the lane's hours of operation. If no times are shown, or there's no sign at all, this means the lane is in operation 24 hours a day. In some areas, other vehicles, such as taxis and motorcycles, are allowed to use bus lanes. The sign will show if this is the case. What should you do if you see a large box fall from a lorry onto the motorway? Go to the next emergency telephone and report the hazard. Stop close to the box until the police arrive. Catch up with the lorry and try to get the driver's attention. Pull over to the hard shoulder, then remove the box. Lorry drivers can be unaware of objects falling from their vehicles. If you see something fall onto a motorway, look to see if the driver pulls over. If they don't stop, don't attempt to retrieve the object yourself. Pull onto the hard shoulder near an emergency telephone and report the hazard. You're about to overtake a cyclist. Why should you leave them as much room as you would give to a car? The cyclist might get off their bicycle. The cyclist might speed up. The cyclist might be unsettled if you pass too near them. The cyclist might have to make a left turn. Before overtaking, assess the situation. Look well ahead to see whether the cyclist will need to change direction. Be especially aware of a cyclist approaching parked vehicles, as they'll need to alter course. Don't pass too closely or cut in sharply as this could unsettle the rider. You're the first person to arrive at an incident where people are badly injured. You've switched on your hazard warning lights and checked all engines are stopped. What else should you do? Make sure that an ambulance has been called. Try and get people who are injured to drink something. Stop other cars and ask the drivers for help. Move the people who are injured clear of their vehicles. If you're the first to arrive at a crash scene, the first concerns are the risk of further collision and fire. Ensuring that vehicle engines are switched off will reduce the risk of fire. Use hazard warning lights so that other traffic knows there's a need for caution. Make sure the emergency services are contacted, don't assume it's already been done. Which document may the police ask you to produce after you've been involved in a collision? Your vehicle service record. Your driving license. Your vehicle registration document. Your theory test certificate. You must stop if you've been involved in a collision that results in injury or damage. 
The police may ask to see your driving license and insurance details at the time or later at a police station. You've just passed your driving test. How can you reduce your risk of being involved in a collision? By staying in the left-hand lane on all roads. By taking further training. By never going over 40 miles per hour. By always staying close to the vehicle in front. New drivers and riders are often involved in a collision or incident early in their driving career. Due to a lack of experience, they may not react to hazards appropriately. Approved training courses are offered by driver and rider training schools for people who have passed their test but want extra training. Why should you switch your headlights on when it first starts to get dark? So that you blend in with other drivers. Because the street lights are lit so others can see you more easily. To make your dials easier to see. Your headlights and tail lights help others on the road to see you. It may be necessary to turn on your headlights during the day if visibility is reduced, for example, due to heavy rain. In these conditions, the light might fade before the street lights are timed to switch on. Be seen to be safe. You're waiting in a traffic queue at night. How can you avoid dazzling drivers behind you? Use the parking brake and footbrake together. Keep your foot on the footbrake. Use the parking brake and release the foot brake. Balance the clutch with the accelerator. In queuing traffic, your brake lights can dazzle drivers behind you. If you apply your parking brake, you can take your foot off the foot brake. This will turn off the brake light so that they can't dazzle the driver behind you. You're driving in traffic at the speed limit for the road. What should you do if the driver behind is trying to overtake? Accelerate to get away from the driver behind. Wave the driver behind to overtake when it's safe. Move closer to the car ahead, so the driver behind has no room to overtake. Keep a steady course and allow the driver behind to overtake. Keep a steady course to give the driver behind an opportunity to overtake safely. If necessary, slow down. Reacting incorrectly to another driver's impatience can lead to danger. How will a roof rack affect your car? Fuel consumption will increase. There will be less wind noise. The engine will use more oil. The car will accelerate faster. A roof rack increases your car's wind resistance. This will cause an increase in fuel consumption, so you should remove it when it isn't being used. An aerodynamically designed roof rack or box will help reduce wind resistance to a minimum, but the rack or box should still be removed when it isn't in use. You're about to go down a steep hill. What should you do to control the speed of your vehicle? Select a high gear and use the brakes firmly. Select a low gear and use the brakes carefully. Select a low gear and avoid using the brakes. 
Select a high gear and use the brakes carefully. When driving down a steep hill, gravity will cause your vehicle to speed up. This will make it more difficult for you to stop. To help keep your vehicle's speed under control, select a lower gear to give you more engine braking and make careful use of the brakes. What does the solid white line at the side of the road indicate? Edge of the carriageway. Traffic lights ahead. Footpath on the left. Cycle path. The continuous white line shows the edge of the carriageway. It can be especially useful when visibility is restricted, such as at night or in bad weather. It's discontinued in some places, for example, at junctions, lay bys, entrances or other openings. What should you do if you're driving on a motorway and you miss the exit that you wanted to take? Carefully reverse in the left-hand lane. Carry on to the next exit. Make a U-turn at the next gap in the central reservation. Carefully reverse along the hard shoulder. It's illegal to reverse. Cross the central reservation or drive against the traffic flow on a motorway. If you miss your exit, carry on until you reach the next one. Ask yourself why you missed your exit, if you think that your concentration is fading, take a break before continuing your journey. When may you drive without wearing your seatbelt? When you're driving slowly in queuing traffic. When you're carrying out a maneuver that includes reversing. When you're testing your brakes. When you're moving off on a hill. You may remove your seatbelt while you're carrying out a maneuver that includes reversing. However, you must remember to put it back on again before you resume driving. You're carrying two 13-year-old children and their parents in your car. Who's responsible for seeing that the children wear seat belts? The children's parents. You, the driver. The children. The front seat passenger. Seatbelts save lives and reduce the risk of injury. If you're carrying passengers under 14 years old, it's your responsibility as the driver to ensure that their seatbelts are fastened or they're seated in an approved child restraint. Why is it particularly important to check your vehicle before making a long motorway journey? The road surface will wear down the tires faster. Motorway services areas don't deal with breakdowns. You'll have to do more harsh braking on motorways. Continuous high speeds increase the risk of your vehicle breaking down. Before you start your journey, make sure that your vehicle can cope with the demands of high-speed driving. You should check a number of things, the main ones being fuel, oil, water and tires. You also need to plan rest stops if you're making a long journey. Who's responsible for making sure that a vehicle isn't overloaded? The driver of the vehicle. 
The person who loaded the vehicle. The licensing authority. The owner of the items being carried. Carrying heavy loads will affect control and the vehicle's handling characteristics. If the vehicle you're driving is overloaded, you'll be held responsible. Which instrument panel warning light would show that headlights are on main beam? You should be aware of all the warning lights and visual aids on the vehicle you're driving. If you're driving a vehicle for the first time, you should familiarize yourself with all the controls, warning lights and visual aids before you set off. When could the cost of your insurance be reduced? When you're under 25 years old. When you complete the Pass Plus scheme. When you pass the driving test first time. When you don't wear glasses. The cost of insurance varies with your age and how long you've been driving. Usually, the younger you are, the more expensive it is, especially if you're under 25. Pass Plus provides additional training to newly qualified drivers. The scheme is recognized by many insurance companies, and taking this extra training could give you reduced insurance premiums, as well as improving your skills and experience. What does the term blind spot mean? An area covered by your right-hand mirror. An area not visible to the driver. An area covered by your left-hand mirror. An area not covered by your headlights. Modern vehicles provide the driver with a good view of both the road ahead and behind using well-positioned mirrors. However, the mirrors can't see every angle of the scene behind and to the sides of the vehicle. It's essential that you know when and how to check the vehicle's blind spots, so that you're aware of any hidden hazards. When should you leave a two-second gap between your vehicle and the one in front? When it's foggy. When it's dry. When it's raining. When it's icy. In good, dry conditions, a driver needs to keep a distance of at least two seconds from the car in front. This should allow enough space for you to stop if the driver in front has to stop suddenly. How can you use your vehicle's engine as a brake? By changing to a lower gear. By selecting reverse gear. By changing to a higher gear. By selecting neutral gear. When driving on downhill stretches of road, selecting a lower gear gives increased engine braking. This will prevent excessive use of the brakes, which become less effective if they overheat. In order to supervise a learner driver you need to have held a full driving license for the same category of vehicle, for at least three years. What other requirement must you meet? To hold an advanced driving certificate. To have a car with dual controls. To be at least 21 years old. To be an approved driving instructor. Learn a driver's benefit by combining professional driving lessons with private practice. However, 
you need to be at least 21 years old and have held your driving license for at least three years before you can supervise a learner driver. What's the legal minimum insurance cover you must have to drive on public roads? Comprehensive. Third party, fire and theft. Third party only. Personal injury cover. The minimum insurance required by law is third-party cover. This covers your liability to others involved in a collision but not damage to your vehicle. Basic third-party insurance also won't cover theft or fire damage. Ask your insurance company for advice on the best cover for you and make sure that you read the policy carefully. What should you do if your vehicle catches fire while you're driving through a tunnel? Park it away from the carriageway. Pull up, then walk to an emergency telephone. Leave it where it is, with the engine running. Drive it out of the tunnel if it's safe to do so. If it's possible, and you can do so without causing further danger, it may be safer to drive a vehicle that's on fire out of a tunnel. The greatest danger in a tunnel fire is smoke and suffocation. What style of driving causes increased risk to everyone? Defensive. Responsible. Considerate. Competitive. Competitive driving increases the risks to everyone and is the opposite of responsible, considerate and defensive driving. Defensive driving is about questioning the actions of other road users and being prepared for the unexpected. Don't be taken by surprise. You're waiting to emerge at a junction. Your view is restricted by parked vehicles. What can help you to see traffic on the road you're joining? Reflections of traffic in windows. Making eye contact with other road users. Checking for traffic in your interior mirror. Looking for traffic behind you. You must be completely sure it's safe to emerge. Try to look for traffic through the windows of the parked cars or in the reflections in windows. Keep looking in all directions as you slowly edge forwards until you can see it safe. You want to put a rear-facing baby seat on the front passenger seat. What must you do if the passenger seat is protected by a frontal airbag? Deactivate the airbag. Put the child in an adult seat belt. Turn the seat to face sideways. Ask a passenger to hold the baby. It's illegal to fit a rear-facing baby seat into a passenger seat protected by an active frontal airbag. If the airbag activates, it could cause serious injury or even death to the child. You must secure it in a different seat or deactivate the relevant airbag. Follow the manufacturer's advice when fitting a baby seat.